Thank you for listening to the Tortoise and the Hare Financial Podcast. My name is Jim Leo, partner of TVH Group, president of TVH Financial. In this episode, I'm going to talk about why a doctor invented critical illness insurance. That's right. You may have not known that, but critical illness insurance was invented by a doctor. And I'm going to share with you how it helped me recover quickly and how it actually impacted my father's health long-term by not having any coverage. But first, let's hear from my sponsor. Today, once again, I'm going to talk about critical illness insurance. Many people don't know this, but a doctor actually invented critical illness insurance a long time ago. It wasn't coverage that was put together by an insurance company or invented by an insurance company. It was actually a doctor that uh, came up with the idea. So uh, the information is from an article that I posted in my TVH group, News You Can Use. If you'd like the article, let me know and I could send it to you. You can also find it on my website if you like. And in the article, I'm just going to read uh, about a paragraph or so and then uh, get into some case studies. Now, in the article itself, there are two case studies, but I'm going to use my own personal experience and my own personal case study, as well as my father's and the impact of uh, not having critical illness insurance on his life and um, what that did from a recovery perspective. So I'm going to start off with the uh, first paragraph. Critical illness insurance was invented by Dr. Marius Barnard. Marius assisted his brother, Dr. Christian Barnard, in performing the first successful heart transplant in 1967 in South Africa. Now, through the years of dealing with cardiac patients, Marius observed that these patients that were better able to deal with the financial stress of their illness recovered more often and at a much faster rate than those for whom money was an issue. He came to the conclusion that he, as a physician, could heal people, but only insurance companies could provide the necessary funds to create the environment that best promoted healing. And as a result, he worked with South African insurance companies to issue the first critical illness policy in 1983. And the first insurance or critical illness insurance policy to be issued here in Canada, it was about in the early to mid 1990s. So in Canada, it's still considered a relatively new product. Now, it continues to say in the article, medical practitioners today will confirm what Dr. Barnard observed. The lower your stress levels, the better the chance for your recovery. When one is ill with a serious illness, having one less thing to deal with, such as financial worry, can only be beneficial. And again, I am living proof of this situation And so was my dad for the opposite reasons. So I'll start off with myself. I unexpectedly required open heart surgery uh, about a year and a half ago now. So it was May of 1990. And I know, you know, as someone who heard of other people who had a similar surgery, you, you understand it's serious, but you can't really appreciate how difficult it is to recover from a a surgery like that uh, and how traumatic a surgery like that is to somebody's body. So if you really think about it, and if I'm getting a little too gory, I apologize, but they start off with an incision down the middle of your chest. And then they take a saw and they saw right down the middle of your breastbone. And then they have to pry or open your rib cage to get to your heart. So that in itself is very traumatic. But then they have, in order to get to your your heart, in my case, they had to stop my heart from beating to work on my heart. So I was intubated. I was on life support. I had a machine that was breathing for me. 
I was on bypass as well. Again, I couldn't have my heart pumping, so they had a machine circulate the blood in my body. All that is very traumatic in itself. But then they had to put an incision in my left ankle to harvest a couple of veins that they were going to use to perform the bypass on my heart. Now, in my case, they were eight, they had to they had to use two um, veins in order to perform the bypass. One of them they were able to do on the front of my heart, but the second one they had to actually lift my heart out of my body or my chest cavity, flip it over so they can sew it uh, all in place, and then they had to put me back together. So the recovery was very, very long, and it was very difficult, to be honest with you. Now, the one thing that I was warned about from my family doctor the cardiac surgeon, my cardiologist, and the expert uh, team at St. Michael's Hospital was that I had to do everything in my power to reduce, if not eliminate, my stress while I was recovering. One of the reasons for that was um, they told me that in the first 12 years after the surgery, I still had about a 36% chance of either stroking out or having a major heart attack. So part of that was could have been triggered from physical uh, activity and, and pushing the heart too, too much too soon. And also stress. Stress is a big driver for people and, and it's a, a major cause of uh, heart attacks. Now... In my case, they wanted me to take about six months off without having to go to work and deal with the stress. Now, because my job wasn't physical in nature, they did say that if I wanted to try after four months that I could reintroduce myself to work but try to limit myself in terms of the amount of hours and, again, try to do my best to eliminate or reduce stress. Well, I was able to keep my stress level, I would say almost at 0% during my four-month recovery. And the reason why I was able to do that, aside from not looking at work emails or dealing with anything at the office, financially I didn't have to worry about my situation because I had critical illness insurance. I knew that there was going to be this injection of capital, tax-free money coming to me that was going to help me pay my bills while I was recovering for the four months. I didn't have to worry about making any mortgage payments. I didn't have to worry about paying any of my bills, putting food on the table. None of those things were a concern for me because it was covered. And as a result, I was able to fully recover from my surgery and and reasonably well. I didn't have to take out any debt. I didn't have to cash out any of my investments that um, are are or, or were set up for my retirement plan because of this money. And after four months, I was able to reintroduce myself to work, and thankfully. I've been dealing with full recovery and a very successful one at that. Now, let me use my father as an example. He didn't have critical illness insurance. And back in the early 90s, he um, was working. He, my father was a heavy equipment mechanic. So his job was at a construction company, and he fixed, you know, all the, the heavy plows and, and dump trunks and anything that uh, was a construction machine, he was the one that would fix it. But in this specific day, the uh, construction company had a shortage of dump truck drivers, and they really needed my dad to drive a dump truck all day, which which he did. My father was a team player. And he had no issues with doing it. He was out all day and think about it, this big, huge machine driving on the roads, um, you know, very, very heavy. And near the end of the day, he 
pulled into the construction yard, parked the dump truck, put it in park, turned off the ignition, and instantly he felt like he had an elephant sitting on his chest. He was having a massive heart attack. He was rushed to the hospital, and thankfully they were able to um, help him through, through that heart attack, and he survived it. Now, my father wasn't an overly healthy man. Like, in looking at him, he looked healthy. You know, he was well-built, not overweight. Um, but, you know, he was a smoker, smoked, you know, packed a one and a half packs a day, wasn't a very good eater. He did have lots of stress. And that's ultimately what led to his heart attack. Now... My father had, uh, I would say, uh, medium damage to his heart because of the heart attack. And I remember that he was told that he needed to take about six months off of work, partially because of stress and partially because he did have a, a physically demanding job. My father was only 42 years old when this happened to him. Unfortunately, after six weeks, my father had to go to work. He had no choice. He didn't have, again, critical illness insurance. It wasn't something that uh, was really available at the time in Canada. It was fairly new. He didn't have disability insurance. The union didn't really provide him any coverage. He had no source of income coming into the family while he wasn't working. My mom wasn't working at the time. I was 17 years old, and my younger siblings, my sister was 15, and my brother would have been 11. He had mouths to feed. He had a mortgage to pay. Now, thankfully, for a short period of time, his employer did continue on paying his income. He wasn't on salary. He was an hourly worker. But they did continue on paying his income for a period of time. But that was only going to last for so long until he was expected to go back to work. So six weeks later, as I mentioned, not six months, he went back to his job as a heavy equipment mechanic. And he didn't recover well. My father, from what I understand, had about three heart attacks in his life. The reason why I'm not 100% certain is I hadn't talked to my father for 25 years leading to his death a couple of years ago. But my understanding was he had about three heart attacks I also understand that he had bypass surgeries on top of the heart attacks. He also had a pacemaker installed. And a lot of this had to do because he didn't fully recover from his original um, heart attack. I would also bet that when he had his other heart attacks and he had his bypass surgeries and the pacemaker uh, put in, that he probably wasn't able to take the time to fully recover and to fully heal. So there's evidence out there right now that someone, even with cancer, not just cardiac uh, related, but anyone who's dealing with a major illness like cancer, like a, a heart attack, if they don't have to deal with any financial stress, they have a better chance of fully recovering. And here's another thing that critical illness insurance does for you. If you're someone who needs some s testing or imaging and there's a, a long waiting period here in Canada, with that injection, injection of capital, you know you can cross over the border, obviously after COVID is over, um, but you'll be able to get testing and pay for it yourself. A lot of people who have some sort of serious illness, critical illness, who don't have any coverage and they have an event 10, 15 years leading up to retirement, if they don't have any cash, they are basically going after their RSP accounts to help fund their um, recoveries. So if you don't have coverage and you would like to consider looking into what it might cost, 
reach out to me. I can be reached at financial at tvhgroup.ca or you can call at 647-727-4668. I do think it's something you should consider. Um, there are different ways we can structure the, the contract. There are ways that we can structure it that if you never claim on it, you're guaranteed to get all of your money refunded. So take a look at it. If you'd like some additional information before talking to me, let me know. And I could send you some, uh, some additional information by way of email. Once again, this is Jim Leo, the Tortoise and the Hare Financial Podcast. Take care.